All right, hello everyone, and here we are with another crate challenge. Today we are going to be playing Beef Wall. That is the name we have affectionately given this deck. Uh, basically, the idea of the deck is to create a wall of the Beefy Boys, which is the Chemical Warriors and the Mutant Marauders. These two together basically kill all ground units, and then you play bikes for light anti-air and stealth tank for heavy anti-air. Uh, so yeah, you basically create the Beef Wall, and then you use these to protect them from air units. Um, I have to say that the one of the big downsides of this deck um, is that the Chemical Warriors and the Mutant Marauders are both slow and need to be in position to fight well. So I do actually prefer the Mutant Marauder Chemical Buggy version of this deck. But this is one of the original decks. Uh, I think SRPSS basically came up with this. So we are going to be playing the beef wall um let's take a moment to talk about crate challenge so the maps are tug of war and hold the line tug of war is obviously a good fortress style map and a good tech map hold the line is an okay tech map um it looks like it should be a good fortress map but it's actually a lot worse than it looks because all the pads are vertical which means it's very difficult to realistically you have to push up so far to hold two pads it's actually not as good as it looks so it ends up being a little bit more of a mobile map um, where you want to have units that can quickly get around. Um, in terms of the rewards for Crate Challenge, Crate Challenge rewards are pretty good. Uh, in terms of the value calculator, they it comes out as one of the sort of medium value events. Um, it's not as good as things like Resource Challenge. And it's not as good as things like war games, but it's close. Uh, it's pretty good still. You're looking at about 116 credits per diamond on the premium track, and about 136 for uh, for the for the regular track. So yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, if you're looking for a way to spend some diamonds, this is a decent one. It'll obviously just give you a lot of random cards though. But yeah, you know, if you're looking for a way to turn diamonds into cards and credits, this is a perfectly perfectly acceptable place to do it uh i would say the cutoff point for buying premium is probably about let me have a look at this uh probably about seven or eight seven or eight wins i think you, i think you want eight wins before you should buy premium on this one but yeah if you get eight two or better reasonable premium uh less than that i probably wouldn't do it all right so let's get into the beef wall So we're going to be opening with wheels, probably, even though most of our power is in our barracks. Uh, wheels are our 10 cost unit. They're the cheap unit we want to open with. So we're probably going to be opening wheels. Against GDI, we're going to open Harvester. Uh, GDI doesn't have a good rush unit. So the best rush unit in GDI is Jump Jet Troopers, which isn't even very good against wheels. So pretty safe to go Harvester first. All right, we've got Grenadier Rush. All right, well... I was wrong. That's a very scary rush unit. Uh, we're going to try and block it off with wheels. Luckily, he is engaging the wheels, which is actually very good for us. If he just went for the harvester, it would be quite difficult to kill them. But basically, we're just happy to keep throwing these 10 cost units at the grenadiers. We don't care if they die. We just want to keep these things away from our harvester. All right, so that actually worked out fine. Um, like I said, GDI not great at rushing. Well, that didn't go great for our opponent. He didn't really support it well. He could have probably supported those Grenadiers or something else. Uh, I think we're going to go Stealth Tank here. This is medium insane. I wouldn't recommend you do this. Uh, I just feel like... I feel like we're going to be able to get his half, you know? I feel like I can bully in here. Alright, so we get one volley and then we run from the Grenadiers. He boosted them, so it's actually okay. Like, even if he kills the Stealth Tank, he's spent the boost as well now. We're going to use the wheels to block for the stealth tank and kill the harvester. All right, we do get the harvester. Very nice. And then we get chemical warriors. All right, so here you can kind of see the problem with grenadiers. Uh, this is why I put grenadiers quite low rated on my tier list. It's very easy just to walk away from them over and over. Now, they've been chasing the stealth tank for about a year now, and now they're dead. So yeah, this is basically one of the reasons I'm not a big fan of them. Um, not a big fan of the uh, of the the grenadier unit all right so he's opened air tower hopefully it's not an orca bomber anything that isn't an orca bomber we can take down pretty easily with the stealth tank orca bomber is a little bit trickier i'm gonna boost these mutants and just take care of these harvesters kind of looks like he's just resource starved he isn't making anything it is an orca bomber luckily our stealth tank is reloaded and we do get to trade 
And that should be game. I don't think he's going to have time to do anything else. Alright, boosted harvester. I like it. Let's kill it before the missile hits. Ah, I didn't get there. Never lucky. Alright, 1 and 0. Oh. Fairly simple victory. I think, honestly, even with the wheels, he should have gone after the harvester. Grenadiers do a lot of vehicle damage. I think there's a chance he could have killed the harvester with the wheels attacking him. Hard to say. I'm not I'm not I'm not experienced enough with a grenadier rush to say whether or not it would have worked. Okay, so now we're going up against Winzel. So again, he's playing GDI, not too scared of a rush, gonna go harvester first. And then wheels. Alright, looks like he's also gone harvester first, and there's some missiles. Pretty easy to just double up our wheels on the missiles here. Early game is all about the defender's advantage, getting the early game positioning. You need you need to keep your missiles together so they can fight 2v2 against wheels or 2v3. Missiles will win 2v2 against wheels, they'll also win 2v3, the two missiles versus three wheels. But two on one twice, they'll lose. And you'll only kill one wheel for each missile squad you lose. So it's really bad to get 2v1 by wheels. There's the second harvester, we'll get some bites to start harassing. Whoops. Got a little miss micro there. Get the double wheels on the missiles. And we're going to go Chemical Warriors for these missiles. Alright, here's going to kill the bikes. We're not too fast. We're going to take the missile pretty easily. And we'll get some beefy boys to go after the harvesters. These are going to be more difficult for him to deal with, most likely. There is an Orca. We're going to intercept it with some bikes. I don't care if he kills the bikes, I just don't want him to kill my, um... I don't want him killing my harvester without any, any fight back. Alright, there we go, we kill the... We kill them pretty easily. Here comes another orca. Okay. I guess he really wants that harvester. Another orca, wow. Okay, so we're gonna go stealth tank. Boost it to kill this orca, and then also to reload in time to kill the other orca. Uh, there we go. Another orca down. We're going to eat the shot with the chemical warriors and then send in the bikes. Another orc. Wow. Okay, this guy really likes orcas. Self tank should reload in time, but we'll make some scavengers just in case. Alright, so he chooses to kill the harvester and then lose the game. Excellent choice. I like it. Good game, Winslow. Alright, 2 and 0. You are victorious. That was a lot of orcas. That guy made a lot of orcas. Alright, HHJJ from No Alliance. You gotta watch out for those No Alliance guys. Once again, GDI, not scared of a rush. I'm gonna go harvest the wheels. Go and have a look at what he's up to. Rifles. Okay, so we're gonna go and harass them and make a second wheel. If the opponent has opened barracks, you can normally pretty safely make a second wheel. And he has missiles. So we're gonna get the 2v1. Oh, nice micro. Blocked my wheels from getting the 2v1. Well played, HHJJ. That's what you want to do if you have uh, if you have rifles early game against wheels. That is the best play. Uh, you want to try and use them to block from the opponent getting a 2v1 with their wheels. So that was a nice play. So we're going to make Marauders for this pit bull. And then we're going to want Chemical Warriors to complete the beef wall. Let's get the Chemical Warriors in here, get the wheels on the rifles. We'll just try and take all the pads now. Get some bites to clean up this. These beefy boys should hold long enough for the missile to fire. That's why they're called beefy boys. Alright, good job, beefy boys. More bikes for Talon. And we'll harass his harvester with our other bikes. Don't think I care about this beefy boy dying now. I kind of just want the pop cap. Alright, so we're going to make a stealth tank. Double up on his uh, 
Alright, uh, this thing's boosted. We're just gonna shoot the harvester a bit and use the stealth tank to kill off the uh, pit bull. And then we'll go after the harvester. And there goes the harvester. Chemical warriors onto the missiles. Bikes take care of the talon. Need some more chemical warriors. Self tank can take care of this pit bull for me. And then chemical warriors need to go after the uh, the missiles. And then we need bikes to go after this talon, which we have bikes down here, so that's easy enough. More chemical warriors over here, and we win. All right, good job, team. So, someone in chat has asked me why am I playing Oksana instead of um, Jade, if I'm not playing Chemical Buggy. Um, the reason is that this was a deck picked by someone else. So I'm playing the deck they've given me. Um, you can play Jade instead of Oksana. I think both are good, honestly. I think both are perfectly reasonable in the deck. Um, Oksana is really good with Mutant Marauders, and it's really good with uh, Stealth Tank. So... You can definitely play Oksana. You can also play Jade. Jade gives you free wins against tech decks because you'll win the first missile most of the time and then just bomb their base. But yeah, Oksana is a very good commander, so there's never, never, uh, you know, you, it's very hard to be wrong playing Oksana. Quite a flexible commander. All right, so he's Rhino rushing our Harvester, which I've never seen before. Actually, I have, but only when levels are involved. I don't know what he's doing, honestly. Alright, so we'll send the wheels over here. We're going to get some scavengers for these pit bulls. And then we're going to send in the bikes. Send the wheels to the back pad. So we'll get two bikes on one pit bull. And then the scavengers will protect us from the other pit bulls. Very nice. First missile is ours. And then we go mutant marauders. It looks like his deck can't beat mutant marauders ever. I mean, I don't know what's in it yet. I don't know every unit, but it, I haven't seen a unit that can come close to beating a Mutant Marauder. I don't know what these Rhinos are doing. They, is he actually trying to kill my Harvester with a Rhino? It's very confusing. I guess he is. I mean... Alright, well, we're just going to keep making Mutant Marauders because he hasn't shown us a unit that can beat them yet. So here's why you play Oksana. Omega Lull! <laughs> uh, pretty good unit with Oksana boost. So he's going to harass my Harvester. He's not even going to kill it before the game ends, I don't think. But I'm just going to... Okay, surrender. All right, cool. Good job, team. His deck could not be a Mutant Marauder. We'll just quickly check his deck after this game because, you know... Like, not even a Shatterer, man. He had Rhinos instead. Like, you could never beat a Mutant Marauder or a Grenadier. Let me just check. I assume it's, like, free War Factory, free tech. Yes, no two War Factory Orca tech. Okay, so yeah, he literally cannot beat Mutant Marauders. Uh, he has to get to tech units before he can contest them. Hizu says he can't beat Stank either. That is true, yeah. Stealth Tank is also going to just one-shot all of his units. Establishing battlefield control. All right, Klein from Germany, NRW. Playing the mighty Solomon. So GDI again. A little bit surprised we just play against GDI. Um, I think GDI is just a lot weaker than Nod right now. Normally I would expect to see mostly Nod in these events. So once again playing against GDI. Not afraid of a rush. Make a second wheel. And then we're going to just be looking to hang out for a bit and do nothing until we make um, until we make a chemical warrior. Ooh, snipers. That's not very good against my wheels. I'll go to third wheel since he's invested another pop cap into snipers. And then we're going to push in against his snipers. I actually don't like all of these wheels combined are worth less than these snipers. But even if I lose all of them but kill the snipers, it's a good trade for me. There's the second harvester to be expected. So we do want to be charging missile now. 
Oops, there's a miss micro from me there. So we're gonna pull these wheels back so we are charging the missile. Send the chemicals in to kill the missiles. Send the wheels at the snipers. Make some more chems. So I'm actually misplaying here by not charging this missile more. Like this missile should have fired about 10 seconds ago if I was playing playing better. That's a pretty big difference against the tech deck. Alright, so if I was playing Jade now, I'd just chem bomb his base. But obviously we're playing Oxana, so we can't do that. Here comes a Wolverine. So we're going to let these wheels go. We don't care about them anymore. And we're going to get mutants. I'm not sure who wins in Mutant versus Wolverine. I think it's the Wolverine. Let's find out. Uh, okay, he's shooting the chems, so the, the mutants are definitely going to win. I actually want these chems to die now. And then I want stealth tank for the Wolverine. Oh, there's a Juggernaut. Okay, we're going to boost and go after the Juggernaut. I think I one-shot a Juggernaut. Let me check. No, that's really bad. Alright, it's cool. We got there in time. And we're going to kill the Wolverine. And that's game. I did. Uh, I didn't realize he didn't one shot uh, Juggernaut with a stealth tank. Uh, Learn something new every day, I guess. Okay. What is that? Four and zero, five and zero, five and zero. Cool. Good job, team. I haven't played against Nod yet. Very surprising. Udziu from Blyskawika. I imagine I pronounced that horrendously. Is it Blyskavika? Yeah, I don't know. Alright, another Solomon player. Go Harvester. And then let's go Wheels. Once again, not afraid of getting rushed because GDI. Oh, it's a double jump jet rush. Okay, well we actually do need to keep harvesting. I actually misclicked by moving my Harvester, that was an error. Double jump jet, man, that's, um, that's surprising. Those things cost 40 each. All right, well, we got punished for our hubris. Underestimated the jump jet rush. But no big deal. Once we set up enough wheels, we should be able to two or three v one any jump jets that come in now. But yeah, definitely a little bit surprised. Didn't expect to take that much damage, to be honest with you, from um, from jump jets. We're gonna make Kem's. Kem's obviously not amazing in this spot, but he's shown us a lot of jump jet troopers. And there's some more jump jet troopers, so yeah. Alright, so he gives up the first missile, which I think is probably an error. Not a big fan of giving up the first missile from our opponent there. But he has done it, so here we are. Let's get rid of these jump jet troopers, and then mutants and fights for everything else. He does get another harvest to kill. As we all know, a player with a more har with more harvest to kills wins every game of rivals, so I am in trouble now. I am gonna have to find and kill two harvesters to get back into this. That's obviously a joke. Like uh, people people focus on the harvester way too much, I think. Like he conceded the first missile to get the harvester. He's gonna get another harvester, but still hasn't shown me any expensive units that make it worth killing my harvesters. Oh, there's an iron cannon. So we mostly dodged the iron cannon. Take out his unit there, and it looks like we're gonna win. It's gonna be close. Another chem trooper. Move the stealth tank over here. And we win. Alright, so he got about a million harvester kills and still lost by a lot. I don't know, man. Maybe the game is bugged. Maybe the game is bugged, because he killed like three harvesters and he still lost the game. I don't know. Confusing. Very confusing. It's possible that spending 80 on jump jets to kill a harvester that gives you 80 back, and then spending 70 and on an orca plus 40 on a pit bull to kill a harvester that gives you 70 back, isn't the best strategy? But I don't know. I'm just guessing. I feel like maybe spending 80 to get 80 and then 110 to get 80 
is not great. But who knows? Who knows? I'm just I'm just spitballing here. <laughs> I'm just guessing. All right, Casey Quaz. So oh, this guy's playing Nod, so we're gonna go wheels first. I don't want to get bike rush. Uh, we have scavengers as our cheap unit, so not great against a rush. Looks like he isn't rushing. He's gone harvester wheels. Sure. So he's playing Jade. He probably has chemical warriors in his deck. Uh, that means we're gonna have a very awkward chemical warrior mirror. Chemical warrior mirrors are really quite miserable. Especially when your opponent has Jade. Uh, if you have Jade, then you're way ahead in a chemical warrior mirror. All right, so we're gonna get another bike. So we're gonna try and eat his bike folly with our wheels. Ah, we messed it up. All right, we need to send these wheels back here to control this pad. Oh, block him, block him. Hey, all right, cool. We take the first miss. I was neat blocking. Cool. Let's get some chems. I haven't really been making my scavengers much. I'd quite like to make my scavengers a couple more, a bit more. So let's get some scavengers here. Scavengers are pretty powerful. Let's move the wheels over here so we get money when they die. Uh, more chems, I think. Although we need to be aware of his jade missiles. All right, cool. Pretty happy just to let the missile charge here. These chems are definitely going to die. Bring the bikes down here. I really need to... Yeah, a, a jade missile could be backbreaking here. Like a well-timed one. So it looks like he hasn't got it. And we just take the win. Alright, good job team. You are victorious. All right, so that's seven and oh. Establishing battlefield control. Must Nick from Hell's Conviction. Hell's Conviction. This is a pretty, pretty solid alliance. This guy's probably a decent player. So we're gonna go wheels first, don't wanna get rushed. Again, he's playing Jade, that's probably bad for us. So our chemical warriors become a weakness. Alright, so he's gonna harvester first. See what he does next. Nothing so far. Alright, let's get some bikes. He's gone Flamers. Okay, well, you guessed wrong, my friend. That was a War Factory start. There's some lasers. We'll back up and try and get a 2v1. And we're going to try and go chems as quickly as possible here. Let's get some scavengers for these fights instead. Alright, so we should just be able to block him off here. Ooh. Take the first missile. We lose a few units in the process, but it's worth it for the first missile. And we got our chems out. Alright, looks like he's going hard on the harvester because he's a player who has played rivals at least once in his life. And as everyone who's played rivals knows, killing harvesters wins games. As we just saw in that last game, that guy got three harvester kills and didn't win the game. But that's that was a that was an outlier. That was the exception that proves the rule, if anything. Okay, so we're gonna boost our stealth tank and try and get to his giga. Go stealth tank, go! Pew, 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 pew. Got him. All right, now let's get some beefy boys. I uh, don't know what he's doing now. Going for the harvester again, maybe. Our oh, stealth tank goes down. No big deal. Get some more chems. Set up the beef wall. I'm not sure where the bikes are going. Again, I, I... dude, seriously, stop it. <laughs> like, what are you doing with your bike? 
All right, and that's games. Congratulations. <laughs> Good job, team. I don't know what he was doing with his bikes. I don't know why they all went down the bottom lane every single time, but there you go. Good job, Beef Wall. That's 8 0. Alistair Overeem, alright, this guy is a maxed level mammoth player on ladder, I believe. As in, every unit he has is 15 fully trained. But this is not ladder, so his units will not be level 15. I suspect we'll still see mammoth flow. We're gonna go wheels first and start charging, because he's gonna almost certainly go for mammoth. This is a very good tech map, so he does have a bit of a bit of an advantage here. Let's see what he does next. Let's get some bikes and go after the harvester. He's gone rifles. Again, unfortunately, friend, you have guessed wrong. It was a war factory opening. Here come the missiles. We're gonna harass down these uh, these rifles. To make sure they can't contest pads. That's a very early Liang drone. Let's see if we can go and hit it. Alright, so we're going to take the first missile at 45 seconds, it looks like. That's about as quickly as you can fire a missile. 48 seconds. That's pretty much the fastest you can fire a missile in this game. And he hasn't even got his second harvester yet either, so that's looking pretty good for us. Let's bring in the chemical warriors. Talon, okay. We don't need bikes for the Talon. Again, if we had Jade, we could just go chem bomb his base. But we are playing Oxana, so we cannot. We're gonna need a stealth tank, probably. Or scavengers, I guess. Scavengers for the Orca is fine. Let's keep charging the missile. Let's protect our scavengers with chemical warriors, like so. And then we'll walk back in to get the extra 10. And we'll let them die now. We need the pop cap. And stealth tank, boost his stealth tank. Now, if we can micro our stealth tank properly, we can kill two talents. Ah, missed it. But here we go. Oh, it's close. Hang on, let me just grab all the pads. Fire at this. Fire at this. Actually, need to go over here. And looks like we win. All right, good job, team. Could not kill our chemical warriors anywhere near quickly enough. So we're going to go Harvester first, uh, even though that jump jet rush did kill our Harvester previously, I don't think it was worth the money our opponent spent, so I'm still pretty happy. Let's see what our opponent's up to. Okay, so our opponent has actually scouted. This is, I think, the first guy we've played against who scouted with a 10 cost unit early in the game. So this guy's already miles ahead of the competition. Renadiers. Alright, those are a problem. We're going to back up until we can save the chems. We could try and 3v1 them with wheels. I think we're going to do that. Go wheels, get them! I think 3v1 we should we should wreck them because they're just so much DPS from the additional squads. Uh, it's actually kind of close. Surprisingly close. All right, but here come the chemical warriors and some more wheels for these guys. We do definitely want to be charging, so we're going to send these two wheels back. We currently have a massive advantage on the board, so the sooner we can get the missile to fire, the better. There's a shatterer, that's to be expected. We'll block his units like so. Walk away from the Shatterer and make a stealth tank to kill it. And he's boosted as well. Pretty big waste of a boost in my opinion. There goes the Shatterer. So now we're going to look to harass his Harvester with the stealth tank. We're going to send it over, fire at his Harvester and then boost. Like so. And then we're going to look to get some bikes for this next Shatterer. That Harvester looks like it's going down pretty quickly. There we go, Harvester down. And we'll, uh, yeah, just swap our units around so the Chemical Warriors are in front. And send some bikes to go harass the Harvester. Not really because we think we're going to kill it, just to get some damage in and, and distract him. 
Grenadiers are trying to go after my stealth tank. That's not going to work. We'll just roll through the chemical warriors. Pretty comfortable. Get some beefy boys. Looks like we're going to win pretty easily, though. Doesn't seem like there's been much competition here. All right, there you have it, boys. 10 and O oh, and girls. Yeah, sorry. 10 and O. Oh. And those who identify as no gender. Objective complete. 10 and O oh for the crate challenge. All right, so let's talk about the deck a little bit. Um, personally, I prefer the version of the deck with the, uh, the chemical buggy instead of the chemical warriors. Um, the chemical warrior deck with uh, with the mutant marauders is quite weak to air and stealth tank is not as broken as it was when this deck first came out so i'm not a huge fan of using just stealth tank as a primary anti-air i don't really like having no air units either it leaves you very weak to certain things like this deck can never really beat artillery this deck can never really beat bomber decks very well i guess it's okay against bomber because of stealth tanks but it can't beat artillery it can't really beat giga Giga's a tough matchup um I think with this version, I might also play Jade, because you saw how many games we had where we could have got three wins by playing Jade. Um, in terms of the power level of the deck, I think it's pretty good. It's probably like a solid tier 2 deck. Uh, the Chemical Buggy version is tier 1. I'll show you the Chemical Buggy version um, very quickly, so you can see what I prefer. So the Chemical Buggy version is basically exactly the same with Chemical Buggies. Uh, except you then play Phantom over Stealth Tank a lot of the time because Phantom is more powerful. So this is the this is the version I would recommend if you wanted to play a Mutant Marauder deck. But this is not really a Beefall deck anymore. This is just a Mutant Marauder Chuggy deck. Um, in terms of difficulty rating of the deck uh, as it was built, I would say this is not too difficult a deck. Uh, it's just about making very powerful units that have a lot of hit points. They can survive a long time, so you can win missiles just by having your guys not die for ages. So I'd put this like a 5 difficulty rating. Like it's not as easy as just sitting back and building a million sandstorms. Um, but it's, yeah, it's not it's not super complicated. Not too difficult to deck. So yeah, probably about 5. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed that. And uh, yeah, we'll be back for, for another video soon. Alright, see you later guys.